Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Bear Clan Gaming, and this is another 7 Days to Die Guide, Fast Money in Alpha 20. With a title like that, you just have to subscribe. I mean, it rhymes. On this video, I'll walk you through the fastest and most efficient ways to get paid in Alpha 20. Some of these methods can be done in the earliest stages of the game, and others require you to be farther in or have a specific skill acquired. Let's get started. The name's Jenny, but you can call me Dr. Jen. The basics. First, let's discuss some rules regarding traders and some general guidelines regarding selling. Traders will only purchase three stacks of an item that can stack like food or resources, and three of a non-stacking item like a firearm or tool. But these sets can be sold at each trader, and this limit resets at each trader restock day. Save all the stuff. Keep everything you loot, craft, and get as reward for questing. What you or your team don't need is also good for dupes at the trader. Gold, silver, diamonds, and old cash are all great items to sell to the trader. If you have them, of course. Be on the lookout for Art of Mining Volume 1, as this provides a path to obtaining silver, gold, and diamonds while mining. Just looking, also, I'd be as rich as trader Joel. ATM machines can be a good source of old cash, as well as cash registers, including the traders. It is generally better to scrap a level 1 item into its base resource or parts versus selling the item. The weapon, tool, armor parts will sell for more dukes than the level 1 item. The only exceptions are for padded armor, leather armor, scrap iron armor, and iron armor. Always sell level 2 and above weapons, tools, and armor as they sell for more dukes than their base components sell for. As you can see here, I have an assortment of pistols starting at level 1 to level 6. The level 1 pistol is 40 dukes sell price. The level 2 jumps to 192, and it just keeps going up from there. No matter the level of pistol, they always scrap into three handgun parts. If you sell all three handgun parts, you'll get 90 dukes. As you can see, that's more than the level 1, but not as much as the level 2. Attach unwanted or unused modifications to any item that will be sold to increase its value. The higher the level item, the more the modification will add to its value. But do not attach mods to level 1 items as the separate mod sell price and the item sell price is higher than the combined price of them put together. You can see attaching this cripple mod for at a sell price of 58 to a level 4 pistol takes the value of the pistol from 496 to 793, which is adding 297 dukes to its value. But if we do the same thing to a level 5 pistol, we go from 648 dukes to 1036 dukes, which is a 388 increase. So you always want to add the unused or unwanted modifications to the highest level items you have. Our final basic selling trick is to always repair items before selling to maximize the sell price of the item. This is extremely important for high level items. Our halfway degraded level 4 pistol is currently at 264 dukes. Oh, are you leaving so soon? But if we repair it, I was hoping we could hang out a while. The value goes up to 496 dukes. Let's discuss the early game. There are a few items that sell well in the early game, including robotic turret ammo and lockpicks. These require very few resources to make, and the return on investment is great. The robotic turret ammo only requires three iron to make one. Each robotic turret ammo sells for one duke plus a little rounding error. The real early money is from making stacks of a thousand and selling for 1800 dukes per stack. So with 3000 iron, you can make a 1000 stack of turret ammo. The iron sell price is about 600, but the turret ammo sell price is 1800. And remember, the trader will s purchase three stacks every three days. So you could make approximately 5,400 dukes every three days per trader. And there should be about four traders in your world, maybe more. Lockpicks require investment into lockpicking level one to unlock, but this can be done right at the start of the game. But for the small sum of one forged iron and one mechanical part, lock picks net you 20 dukes. 50 forged iron and 50 mechanical parts make a stack of 50 lock picks. 
and means 1,000 dukes per stack. These are easily obtained items in the first few days of the game, but what about later in the game? When can we expect to make some real money? Let's discuss mid-game. Once you're established in the game and you're looking to make some real money, you can start selling all the armor, weapons, and tools you no longer need. Found a level 5 iron axe? Then sell the level 3. Got a shiny new steel club? Why not sell the old bat? Always be saving items that are not needed so they can be sold to the trader. You can even become a factory if you have a few skill points invested into Grease Monkey and Advanced Engineering. With only 8 skill points, 4 into Intelligence, 2 into Advanced Engineering, and 2 into Grease Monkey, you can start cranking out bicycle handlebars and chassis and minibike handlebars and chassis. If you can also invest in salvage operations, resource gathering becomes even more profitable. The bicycle parts sell for 150 dukes apiece and the minibike parts for 360 dukes each. With full stacks, that turns into 7,500 dukes with the bicycle parts and 18,000 dukes for the minibike parts. Also, don't forget about the reinforced strawberry for some quick cash with minimal resources, netting 5,520 dukes. Only requiring 100 forged iron, 1,000 wood, 20 springs, and 30 mechanical parts. But we need an item that can be crafted without the need for non-craftable resources like springs and headlights or mechanical parts. Beer, coffee, and blackstrap coffee are your three best options. They just don't sell for a whole lot, but can be produced in massive quantities. Coffee requiring just a coffee bean and a boiled water, and a stack of 10 getting you 192 dukes. Beer requiring four hops and a murky water, giving you 200 dukes. And then of course, with the Art of Mining Volume 4, you can craft blackstrap coffee requiring a coffee bean, a boiled water, and five gunpowder but a stack netting 400. Now let's discuss late game. In the late game, when forged steel is plentiful, then you can upgrade to motorcycle, 4x4, and gyrocopter parts. These items sell full stacks for 30,000, 90,000, and 150,000 per. And by now you're finding level five and six of numerous items, including all the mods one could ever need. But honestly, the late game is not where fast money is critical, so we're going to need to get some boosts in the beginning. There are five ways to boost your barter in Seven Days to Die. The Sugar Butts Candy, the Cigar, Grandpa's Awesome Sauce, Magnum Enforcer Volume 4 with a Magnum Firearm, and the Better Barter Skill. The Sugar Butts Candy is found in working vending machines and gives you a 10% boost to barter. The Cigar can be looted, bought from a trader, or crafted once you find Urban Combat Volume 2. The Cigar, while worn, gives a 10% boost to barter as well. Grandpa's Awesome so Sauce can be looted, bought from a trader, or crafted once you find the recipe or unlocked via Master Chef. It gives a 20% boost to barter. After reading the Magnum Enforcer Volume 4, and while holding a 44 Magnum or Desert Vulture, you get a 5% boost to barter. And finally, the Better Barter skill gives 5% boost to each level unlocked up to 25%. This does require a fully unlocked intellect tree, totaling 21 skill points. With all these boosts combined, you get a 70% increase in selling prices. You also get a 70% discount buying, and if you ever had your eye on solar panel or other late game item, this would be the time to do it. So let's see what this 70% increase in selling prices looks like. With these tactics and a bit of planning and a lot of forwarding, you can get rich quick and buy anything you want. Or use the dukes for brass in your forge, which is most likely late game. If you have any other ways to get fast cash in 7 days to die, please leave a comment below. If you found these tips helpful, please leave a like and share this video with other survivors. For more videos like this, please subscribe. Until next time, laters.